Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. Well, one of the problems Wichita faces as we decide the future level of government involvement in our economy is an anti-market and anti-capitalism bias of many council members. And it's also characteristic of city hall bureaucrats. Well, I really don't know if it's a bias or just not being informed. But the basic belief is that government is not hindered by the demands of business, such as earning a profit and avoiding losses. Therefore, government is able to do things that the private sector cannot or will not do. Wichita City Council member Janet Miller, she represents District 6, uh, mostly North Central Wichita, she recently provided as an example as reported on the pages of the Wichita Eagle on March 28th. And the Wichita Eagle reported, Council Member Janet Miller called the Hyatt a special case and she's opposed to selling it. We have to maintain a high quality convention hotel, she said. The hotel makes a profit, but we reinvest the profits back into it. If we sell that property, a hotelier is unlikely to invest as much back into it as we do, debt service, stockholders, things like that. We don't have that burden. Well, that was Wichita City Council member Janet Miller talking about the Hyatt Hotel in downtown Wichita. Now, I don't know if Janet Miller reads the Wichita Eagle, but if she had, less than one month before, that newspaper reported this. It said a $5 million renovation project at the Wichita Marriott Hotel near East Kellogg and the Kansas Turnpike is now complete. The 10-month-long project encompassed nearly the entire ground floor of the 11-story, 294-room hotel. We basically tore everything down and started from scratch, said the hotel's manager, who added that the hotel remained in operation during the renovation. It follows a renovation of the hotel's guest rooms about four years ago, she said. Well, wait a minute. Didn't a city council member just tell us that a private hotel owner is unlikely to invest profits back into the hotel in this way? That's what I heard Janet Miller say. Now I invite you to draw your own conclusions, but here are a few of mine. First, if I owned or worked at the Wichita Marriott or several other hotels in Wichita, I'd be offended with Miller's implication that the Hyatt is Wichita's only high-quality convention hotel. Why did we pour millions in taxpayer subsidy into the Broadview and Ambassador Hotels in downtown Wichita? And even though it has the burden of being in the private sector, how was the Marriott able to invest millions in renovation? And how would you feel if you owned a high-quality convention hotel in Wichita like the Marriott, and the city operates a competitor to you that doesn't have to worry about profits, debt service, and shareholders? Does that create an environment that encourages private investment? Perhaps this is why so many of the hotels that have opened recently in Wichita have sought and received millions in government subsidy. And also, I wonder if other hotels are more diligent than the Wichita government-owned Hyatt Hotel in keeping people from establishing meth labs in their rooms. Yeah, that's right. In September 2004, the Wichita Eagle reported that a man was arrested after police discovered a meth lab operating in a room at Wichita's downtown Hyatt Hotel. You know, the hotel that Wichita City Council member Janet Miller implied is our only high-quality convention hotel. Well, the expressed attitude of Miller towards business and capitalism is common among government officials and bureaucrats. Yet, we are expected to trust people with these beliefs to lead our economic development efforts. It's little wonder that the only solutions considered involve a greater role for government, including greater revenue for government, oh, taxes, I meant to say. Well, here's another example. And, okay, I realize it looks like I'm picking on women here, but you remember in the past I've showed videos spotlighting the bad behavior of Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer and Council Members Jeff Longwell and Pete Meitzner. I do try to spread it around equally. But back in February 2012, two years ago, the Wichita School Board held a meeting, and the topic was deciding whether to close several schools. It was contentious. At the meeting, citizens had criticized the board for large and important issues, but also for such mundane things as the amount of the superintendent's monthly car allowance. And board president Betty Arnold admonished citizens for speaking about things like this in public. It's not respectful, she said. 
And finally, after directing a uniformed security guard to station himself near a citizen speaker, Arnold told the audience, If we need to clear the room, we will clear the room. This board meeting is held in public, but is not for the public or of the public. And I hope you understand that. Let's go to the videotape. The basis of the Kansas Open Meetings Law is the presumption of openness. If officials meet in a private and make in, in private and make up their minds about how their vote and what ma'am, I will interrupt you. Uh, first again, first of all, you are making accusations against the board. Just a moment, just hear me out. Now, we would love to hear your comments, but once again, no disrespect will be shown to the board members as we These will are not. Facts. Just a moment. It is not a fact that we've met in private. I will ask you, please, to reframe your comments to a respectful tone to the board. We're more than happy to listen to you. Okay, you interrupt. This is the second time you've interrupted me. Uh, uh, Ma'am, I am directing okay. this this meeting now. You will either. That's okay. Uh, just a moment. Uh, sir, could you please come over? I will once again, for the final time, remind the audience, there will be no further outbreaks, none. If we need to clear the room, we will clear the room. This hey, board meeting is being held in public, but it is not for the public or of the public. And I hope you understand that. Again, I am asking your comments to please be respectful. No accusations are necessary. So I can, can I can continue, you know, now? If you can continue within the line that I'm asking you to continue in, yes, you may. Thank you. But if you have accusations, I will interrupt and I will ask you please to take your seat. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, this certainly lets citizens know the meaning of the term public when it comes to our public schools. By the way, the Wichita School District is, by now, one of the few governmental agencies that does not make video of its meetings available. You can watch a broadcast of their meetings on the day following the meeting, and it might be repeated again during the week, but that's it. Okay, one more example. When the Wichita City Council debated adding fluoride to Wichita's water, Council Member Levada Williams, that's District 1, Northeast Wichita, she advised taxpayers on what to do if they disagree with action taken by the council. Just don't go there, she said. Now, Williams was expressing concern that if the council were to decide to fluoridate Wichita's water, well, then citizens would not be able to avoid ingesting the added fluoride. They wouldn't have a choice. And by way of analogy, Williams counseled the concerned citizen. She said, did you like the art that went down to Waterwalk? Maybe you didn't, but you don't have to go there. And she also said, we don't have to go to the apartments that were built at Waterwalk, and we don't have to stay at the Ambassador Hotel. Let's go to the videotape. We make those decisions all the time. Did you like the art that went down to the Waterwalk? Maybe you didn't, but you don't have to go there. Did you like the apartments that were built? Maybe you didn't, but you don't have to go there. Did you like the Ambassador Hotel? A lot of you didn't, but you don't have to stay there. But if we make a decision today, the seven of us, to move forward on fluoride, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Yes, it's true. We can mostly avoid these government-sponsored and subsidized places if we want. But what Council Member Levana Williams may have forgotten is that we can't avoid being forced to pay for them. And having paid for them, shouldn't we be able to enjoy them such as they are? Besides that, what does it say about a government where if we disagree with its actions, if we disagree with the way it has spent our taxpayer dollars, we're told, you don't have to go there. Just look the other way. These are our governmental leaders. 
we need to do better. We have to do better. And as we saw last week, some of the private sector leaders who dabble in government aren't much better. This year could be an important year for Wichita as we may be asked to make large and important decisions. Keep tuned to Wichita Liberty TV and visit the Voice for Liberty on the internet at wichitaliberty.org. I'll do my best to keep you informed. Well, that's Wichita Liberty TV for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Bob Weeks.